Hey guys, welcome back to another Saturday video. Today I'm going over all my my almost my almost my complete portfolio, um, all my dividend income, option income, YouTube income, all that stuff. As most of you know, some of you know, and for those who don't, um, my plan is to retire with less, and that's uh, kind of evolved into the theme of of my channel here. Matter of fact, I'm thinking about renaming the channel. Give me your thoughts about that down below. Um, but uh, the premise here is uh, my backstory basically is that I waited way too long to start investing. Um, and I wanted to retire early. You know, you, got, you get to an age where if you haven't been investing, you get an epiphany. And you think, oh, what the heck am I going to do? Because... Um, you know, especially someone like me, I'm not educated, um, never was a high earner, was just kind of a labor guy, right? So, you know, all this time I was just thinking, I just work till I die. Well, it comes to a point where it's like, okay, I'm tired of working, right? What am I going to do? Well, you know, at, at first I thought all is like, doomed right it's just i'm just doomed forget about it you know write me off and just let's go back to work but that started me off onto a journey where um i started looking like okay how would we retire if we wanted to retire because i thought about you know I, if, if i have no savings right can you live on social security you know, so I started researching Social Security and I was like, uh, uh, you know, I might not be able to live on that. Um, so it, it, it started me on this investment journey. And eventually, after a couple of years, I started finding, you know, dividend investing, option income, side hustles like YouTube um, and and just the the world kind of opened up and said, OK, this is possible and it's possible for anyone uh, that wants to, you know, um, kind of stick their foot in the ground and just go for it. Right. Um, you can do it. You know, I'm, I'm nothing special. Um, I'm definitely, uh, probably would consider be considered a very low income earner in America today. So if I can do it, you can do it. You just need to come up with a plan, um, write your plan out, um, if you have debt, write that stuff out, start attacking that. That's number one. Um, then start investing and start looking at all the different options. Check out some of my other videos on, on how uh, you can create income from a smaller portfolio. So that's my goal, right? And we'll go over, I'm going to share with you my, my, where I'm at on the goal. Cause remember, if you remember way back, my goal was $250,000. And obviously I'm not there yet, but I'm, I got a good chunk of that knocked out. Um, I still got a few more years to go, right? Uh, my goal was for 2030, right? And I think I'm going to knock that out the park. And um, I just hope so. I had a conservative goal of $250,000 and that's what spurred my retire with less series. Because that started with $250,000 and I wanted to see how I can generate consistent monthly income off of a smaller portfolio because all the experts say you need a million dollars or more some say you need 30 million to retire right so if you haven't seen those check those out and uh you know that's that's kind of what i've evolved in into youtube um sharing with you my thoughts my journey into early retirement with less so if you're new here, like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Check the pinned comment down below uh, for ways you can support the channel. Now, let's just get into it. So as I start these off, I start off with um, the YouTube earnings, the Amazon earnings, the Teespring, M1 Finance, and the Ko-Fi Gifts, which is basically a tip jar. And uh, we'll go through the month of July and see how we did. So YouTube paid us uh, $310.73 and that comes from you guys watching the ads. Um, I'm not sure if we get paid for skipped ads. I'm not sure. Um, but either way, um, when you view my videos, 
we get a uh, YouTube creators get a portion of that. It's like a penny per view, if if that. And um, so we got three hundred and ten dollars and seventy three cents. Now, Amazon, Amazon, um, if you use my link down below and shop through Amazon, Amazon will send me a portion. It's like a three percent commission on qualified purchases. Um, you know, if you're, you know, always shopping on Amazon anyway, it's good to use somebody's link. You don't have to use mine if you don't want to, but use somebody's link because that just gives them, um, you know, a couple extra bucks, right? And it's and it's not it doesn't cost you anything extra. Well, this month <laughs> I got a big goose egg. Actually, I I got a negative a dollar eighty. Someone returned something, I guess. Um, and nobody bought anything for the month of July. So um, Amazon takes sixty days to pay out, and I'll probably get these two payments in August. So got nothing from Amazon. Uh, Teespring that was kind of interesting because I remember last month I talked about Teespring and how it's just dead in the water and and I don't really mess with it anymore um, but someone actually bought a long sleeve t-shirt uh, from Teespring so uh, if you're watching thank you very much I appreciate it now M1 Finance I got two referrals uh, from M1 Finance if you don't know M1 Finance is offering a $50 uh, referral bonus uh, if you deposit $100 in a taxable account or 500 in an IRA account they'll give you 50 bucks and they'll give me 50 bucks so it's a win-win right there and and two of you decided to do that so thank you very much now Kofi Kofi is just a tip jar that's down there if you want to support the channel with just a cash gift um, it's just tip jar just think of it that way and to those that you have done it uh, I truly appreciate it because that means a lot to me that you would uh, you would uh, think to, you know, send me a gift like that. So I, I do appreciate that. And I got $40 out of that. And that goes straight in to the GW ETF channel RV fund. Now, those that don't know, me and my wife, when we retire, we're going to buy an RV and hit the road. And no, I'm not buying. I know an RV is a bad investment. It actually is a great investment in the past couple of years. But uh, for the most part, RVs are horrible investments. But I'm not buying it as a monetary investment. I'm buying it as an experiential investment and you can't, you know, you can't put a price on that. Me and my wife will probably travel the country for, I don't know, five, 10 years or whatever. We're going to see every corner of this country and, and, um, however long that takes is however long that's going to take. So, um, hopefully in those travels we'll, we'll be able to find a place to settle down and, and cause it probably won't be here in California. Um, it's just, it's not the way I earn money in taxable, um, in options is not very favorable here in, in California, but, um, there's some complications there. I, I won't get into that either. So, <laughs> So for the month of July, all of that added up to $462.10. Since we started uh, keeping track of this back in June of 2020, so it's been over a year, $3,676.20, and it all went into the RV fund that is invested in QQQM and QQQJ, and I'll share that with you on the next page when we get there. So we have that $50,000 goal. Now my goal for this was to get to fifty thousand dollars because I wanted the two hundred and fifty thousand that I'm that I'm uh, retiring with to generate enough income for us to live. What I didn't account for was the actual RV, and uh, that would be uh, that would be cool if this got to fifty thousand dollars and I'd be able to cash out and go buy an RV. Will I cash out? I don't know. Um, I mean, there's other ways. It could be you know, more beneficial to make payments on it. I don't know. We'll have to see when the time comes. That's years down the line. And uh, I'm glad you guys are here to to watch it. So the RV fundometer, there you go. We're getting, we're ticking up there. We're at like a eighth of a tank now. We need to get that sucker up there. So was a good month, 462.10. Can't complain. So what I'm going to share with you next is pretty much my entire portfolio and some of you are going to laugh at it because it's kind of small and um but i'll explain 
So we go over here to my road to retire um, uh, spreadsheet. And what you'll see here is I took off uh, my individual position of rocket. Um, I don't consider that core. I consider this my core holdings. So if you want to see like um, temporary positions, watch my Wednesday videos because I go over my, my wheeling positions as far as um, stocks that were assigned to me through options that I'm selling covered calls on or selling puts on, things of that nature. Um, I don't consider that my core. Those will go away in a heartbeat. I, it doesn't matter to me. But this here, this is my core portfolio. So we'll just start at the top and uh, actually we'll go out of order actually here because I'm talking about uh, the GWRV fund is invested in QQQM and QQQJ. So at the end of July, we had 15 shares of QQQM and 45.58 shares of QQQJ. Uh, total mar uh, market value of this is about 3,800, but that does not include... Um, this here yet or this uh, because these haven't actually been paid to me yet for me to put it in so um, you know I'm, I'm going I'm shooting for pure growth here in the in the RV fund next up is my uh, new C fund I kind of use this as a savings account I buy a few shares what I do is I use my fidelity uh, cashback card for as many purchases as I can um, I usually get between 40 and 50 bucks a month and I put that straight into Nusi and um, what else I think and then the dividend so uh, I'm buying you know 70 80 dollars worth of Nusi every month and so we're now we're up to 202.925 shares of Nusi um, I'm gonna cap this thing um, I don't know where but I'll probably, because I, I need to grow my options income, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. And then uh, my wife has an account with M1 Finance, and um, she has Degrow and this FDIS. So Degrow is the main one. Um, what I do is we just paid off our car a couple months ago, and that payment was $360 per month. So I dedicated that payment to her M1 finance account to buy $360 of Degrow or I'll split up between Degrow and FDIS. I think FDIS is like 4% of the pie, something like that. It's a small portion, but mostly Degrow. And um, I messed up. Uh, if you see last month, I had 21 shares and this month I have 34. I messed up. I forgot that I auto deposited that $360 payment uh, to automatically deposit and automatically invest. So I doubled up on degrow this month. So that's fine. And then FDIS, we got 2.36. I wanted exposure up here to, uh, Amazon, Tesla, things like that. And that's what the consumer discretionary sector ETF is only got a couple of shares there. Now the big, big daddy here is the options account. Now, um, I never shared what the total worth of the options account was and I am today and you'll see at the allocation it's 87.8 percent of my complete portfolio minus um, those option positions that I talked about that you can check out on Wednesday videos um, and also minus cash I do have a little bit of cash but that's earmarked um, for taxes for next year um, I do sell a couple of uh, cash secured puts against that money just small amounts uh, just to generate kind of like a savings account um, but my options account uh, the net market value or the net liquidation value of my options account so if I were to close out my options account uh, at the end of July it would have been worth eighty three thousand three hundred and twenty eight dollars so total market value of everything ninety four thousand nine oh five so you see, um, you know, $250,000 is the goal. And, um, you know, we're, what, 40% there roughly? So, uh, yeah, almost. Well, with the cash I am. So um, not bad. Not bad at all. And then, uh, as you'll see, uh, so far this year, I've made $15,303.15 off of the options account. That's a realized profit in the options account. And that has a dividend yield, so that's my return, basically, 18.36%. But that's that's kind of 
that's kind of um, that's kind of misleading because a lot of this money was earned when this uh, the market value of this account was a lot lower. We had kind of a windfall and we were able to put in a big chunk of money here recently. So um, it's kind of a kind of a misleading number. It probably should be higher, but it is what it is. I, I'm just looking at total numbers. So fifteen thousand three hundred and three dollars was earned through my options account year to date. And then the annual income for the dividends is really nothing to speak about, except for maybe Nusi. You're getting four hundred and thirty-eight dollars and thirty-two cents a year off of Nusi. Um, you know, I don't know how I, I don't I don't know how my portfolio is going to look in the end, and how much I'll use these income ETFs. Um, we'll see. It's going to depend on how big my account is. Um, it's going to depend on how much money I'm I'm generating from options. Um, and, and things of that nature and how much, and, and really how much money I really need to live. So we'll just have to play that by ear. So for the month of July, we earned $39 and 67 cents in dividends. And that all came from, uh, Nusi, and that got reinvested plus the $40 from the cashback reward card. So it bought us about 80 bucks worth of Nusi uh, for the month of July. So you'll see the current monthly average is $1,314.93. That's averaged out over 12 months. But so the average is a lot higher um, if you just look at uh, the last eight months. Now go over to the options account and the month of July, um, this is where all the option income made uh, realized profit of two thousand six hundred and fifty two dollars and thirty four cents and you'll see um it was kind of a up and down month um you see you have made a hundred and ninety dollars on july 1st and then only 20 on on july 2nd so it's really up and down lost some money on july 12th didn't make any money on the 15th um, didn't make any money for four days here in the last week of july or week and a half um, but all in all um, very good month, $2,652.34. So that's my entire portfolio for the most part. You know, like I said, you got to check out those Wednesday videos for um, some of the stocks that I don't plan on holding very long. Um, but this is definitely the core of the portfolio. This is what I, you know, concentrate on building uh, every day. So, how did my total month co? come out well you probably tell by the thumbnail but here we go oh i wanted to do this uh so for options because this is pretty much a part-time job for me um it seems like investing in youtube combined is pretty much my full-time job now um, i do have other sources of income but um, investing in youtube really take up a ton of my time uh, i'm talking you know probably more than 40 hours a week uh, you consider, you know, live streams and um, chatting with people in the Discord time, uh, responding to comments, social media, producing the videos, editing the videos, you know, uh, maintaining these spreadsheets, uh, investing, all that. You know, it, it takes a lot of time. So um, for the month, 2652.34. That works out to $126.30 per trading day, not per day of the month. So per trading day. And then hourly, that's per uh, trading hour. Uh, markets only open six and a half hours a day. So $19.43 per hour. So grand total for the month of July. Um, you got options there, dividends, and the YouTube. We got a grand total. $3,154.11 for the month of July uh, for all my efforts into investing options, uh, YouTube, you guys, social media, you know, all that live streams with Dave over at Hidden Freedom, um, all that time that I've invested and we got $3,154.11 now. Some people will say, well, that's, you're saying that you're putting in all this time. I enjoy this. This is, this is, this is fun. Um, you know, uh, I don't, I don't know what more to say. It's just, I enjoy what I'm doing now. 
Um, and uh, thank you guys for your support. Um, I really appreciate it. You know, um, always, you know, I, I appreciate all the comments I receive uh, sharing the video. Someone um, messaged me and said they shared my video on Reddit that was awesome uh seemed like i got a, a little bit of traffic off of that so if you guys can share my videos you know share it on your social media say hey check this guy out you know there's probably a lot more people than you think that um are struggling with uh smaller portfolios or struggling with uh can i retire um or struggling with you know, I'll never be able to retire because all these people are telling me I need six million dollars. There's a lot of people that need to hear that message that uh, that I'm putting out that, you know, there is solutions. There are options and there's literally options um, that you can use to generate income and you don't have to be stuck in that hamster wheel uh, all your life. Right. You can go out and enjoy and do something you do want to do. You know, um, the real key is trying to find something that you want to do, that you enjoy, and that you can make money on. That would be nice. So that's kind of what I've found here. Um, so again, hope you guys have a great weekend. Leave me a comment down below. Check out the pinned comment for ways you can support the channel. Like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, let's all retire with less. You guys have a great weekend. Thanks. Bye-bye. I am not a financial advisor. The information contained in this video is for entertainment and informational purposes only. It is not intended to be investment advice. Please seek a licensed professional for any investment, tax, or legal advice. Thank you.